Hey, friends. You know, there was a period in the 1970s where a trend developed in entertainment that posited the question, what would happen if nature turned against mankind? Such as in the Day of the Animals, Kingdom of the Spiders with Captain Kirk, or Night of the Lepus with Dr. McCoy. Similarly, a sort of subgenre of horror came along, still popular today, that asked what would happen if machines turned against mankind? Christine, Maximum Overdrive, The Car 2, not the original car in The Car, that was something else, a demon car, but The Car 2, yeah, that was a possessed car. Arguably, even my mother, the car, is about a possessed car. Ew. Anyway, I have one of these possessed vehicle movies to share with you. A TV movie called Killdozer from 1974. This one comes courtesy of Michael, one of my viewers. He, he got this for me off of my wish list. Thanks, man. No, I hadn't seen Killdozer until now, so this was a real treat. Our story goes like this. This here space rock is flying through space, as they do, when it decides to crash on Earth. When this happens is hard to say. I got the impression it was in the distant past, but anyway, Flash forward to the then present day. A team of construction workers have been contracted to clear land on an island way out in the middle of nowhere off the coast of Africa. They're supposed to set things up in preparation for an oil company who will be working in the area. As the team gets to work, one of the men driving a giant ass bulldozer is plowing away when he runs into this space rock. There's a flash of blue energy that fries one of the men, and whatever the evil entity is, it transfers itself to the bulldozer, which quickly becomes a killdozer. Now, this handful of construction guys are all alone on the island. The killdozer smashes their radio to keep them from calling for help. Then it starts chasing them around, picking off the team one by one. As the survivors struggle to stay alive and find a way to kill the killdozer before the killdozer kills them by killing. Will help arrive in time? Can the killdozer be stopped? Can our heroes kill the killer killdozer? In our cast, we have the stalwart actor Clint Walker, who we last saw in a werewolf movie we talked about last Halloween. Here, he's the leader of the men. We also have Neville Brand, a familiar face who rode alongside the Duke in Cahill, U.S. Marshal, and played Al Capone in the Untouchables TV series. Robert Urick from Vegas and Spencer for Hire and many other things is here as a construction worker. James Wainwright, James A. Watson Jr. and Carl Betts round out the cast. Director Jerry London was an old hand at television production, having helmed episodes of The Brady Bunch, The Rockford Files, The Six Million Dollar Man, Hogan's Heroes, and the Partridge family, as well as TV projects such as Chiefs, Shogun, and The Scarlet and the Black, and many, many more. So he had tons of experience. Now, this is a horror movie, yes, but it's also a science fiction movie, given the alien entity standing in for the more typical ghost or demon in a story like this. And, believe it or not, there's a Star Trek connection to Killdozer. Producer Herbert F. Solo was a production manager on Trek. And the man from Atlantis. <laughs> well, the story was written by Theodore Sturgeon, who wrote the classic Trek episodes Amok Time and Shore Lee. Sturgeon's Killdozer story had originally appeared in the 1944 issue of Astounding Science Fiction magazine. This movie is a real hoot. 
In some ways, you feel the filmmakers saw some kids playing with Tonka trucks, pretending they could fight like dinosaurs. <laughs> and that's why they made this. But Killdozer takes itself seriously enough to avoid slipping into parody, and you really root for the men to make it. The characters have a reality, too, each having their own faults and flaws they must somehow set aside in order to survive the unstoppable killing machine. The movie looks good on the Blu-ray from Kino Lorber, which also sports a short audio interview with Jerry London about Killdozer and other projects he worked on. At the time it came out, Killdozer was not a big hit and got bad reviews, but over the years it's gained a well-deserved cult following. I'm giving this one two and a half paws. Well worth a watch and a fine example of the possessed vehicle genre. You take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next one.